Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we'll be taking a look at the Jairus 80 by Iris Labs. This is a TKL aluminum keyboard that starts at $165 and offers a variety of different parts you can customize. The Jairus 80 comes in a carrying case, great for storing and transporting your keyboard. These are by far my favorite way to store and swap out my keyboards as it's super quick to do so without dealing with big bulky boxes. This features a protection flap and pocket on the top for storing your extras, keeping everything nice and organized. To help start out your build, an alu screwdriver with two replaceable bits are included, Type-C cable, and a 2-in-1 switch puller slash keycap puller. Inside, you should receive the PCB of your choice, multi-layout PCBs that come in hot swap, 1.2 or 1.6 millimeter thickness with or without flex cuts, 1.6 millimeter non-flex cut solder PCB, Note these PCBs do not come with Perky RGB. If you would like Perky RGB, you would have to opt in for the 1.6mm hot swap ANSI PCB as shown here. The PCB I opted in for this is the 1.6mm non-flex cut solder PCB. These usually are my favorite as the thickness includes with no flex cuts should help eliminate hollowness or thin sounding builds, but will take away from that bouncy typing experience. Kind of flexes a little bit, not much, but. The PCBs are QMK via supported for the wire additions and wireless PCBs use the Iris Lab software. The tabs on the PCB allow for a plateless build using the gasket silicone columns that to me look like mini dumbbells. This keyboard's getting some serious gains. These gaskets can be placed in any slot of your choice and you can experiment to find your perfect typing experience. I personally placed mine on the outside of each tab. This was a unique take that I have not yet experienced with gaskets and was a lot of fun trying to figure out what combinations I liked. If I should do a single. It's not like there's flex cuts on these anyway, so it's gonna depend on this thing. Yeah, I'm gonna do two. But I'm gonna do outside. Foam is also included, IXPE foam to go on the top of your PCB, pour on plate foam and pour on case foam. This furthers the customization of sound signature that you can get from your Jairus 80. In today's build, no foam was used because the board sounds great as is, but I'll let you be the judge during the sound test. Side note, I'm not a big fan of foam unless I really need it. Sorry, kind of bias. <laughs> it's very nice to see most play options available for the Jairus 80 with all types of materials and cut options. The Alu Flex Cut plate was sent with this unit and from my typing experience it's hard to tell if I honestly feel any flex or forgiveness coming from these cuts. Now for add-ons, you basically can customize everything on the board from top case, weights, knobs, and the strip you see on the top case. What really caught my eye is the Wave and Cloud Titanium weights that look super cool. It would be nice to also see this option on the stainless steel strip for the top case. Some extras that were sent with my Jairus 80 were the two inverted triangle weights with the PVD chroma. These triangle weights are mounted with magnets. Now onto the case itself. Wind key and wind keyless options are both available. The front height is 18 millimeter and typing angle is 7.5. Both very popular front heights and typing angles in this hobby from what I've seen and also is my favorite. This gives a very comfortable height and typing angle for most end users. The layout supports a F13 key or to me an artisan holder. If you know, you know. You can opt in for a knob for the pause key as well in the add-ons. To me, this looks a little off to the whole layout, so I didn't try this out. The top case features a LED light strip that can be changed to any color or feature you'd like. You can't go wrong with a little RGB. This is also paired with a nice PVD stainless steel strip to help showcase some of that RGB and a simple clean design. These two accent pieces I think really helps give the Jairus 80 its own style of design and helps it pop. The case itself is CNC'd from 6063 Alu and offers a ton of colors in eco and anodize that I'll show you on screen. This is a huge plus to giving you that personalized experience without being limited to three or four colors most keyboards offer. There is even dual colors if you're into that. The rectangle weight helps give a different look to the bottom case with its supported negative space and magnetic inverted triangle weight that I really like helps separating it from other keyboards. The Jairus 80 features a brass internal weight to help increase density and reduce vibrations while typing. This weight also covers a battery compartment, but covers screws for external weights, so you will need to take this off if you want to swap them out. Jairus 80 features the catch ball latch system to easily assemble or disassemble the keyboard on the fly, giving a screwless appearance on the bottom of the keyboard. This by far is my favorite system for keyboards to quickly swap out builds, or in this case, change gasket placement. 
I know this may sound silly, but sometimes taking out six or eight screws depending on this design gets annoying and may lead to you scratching the bottom of the board. I've done this in the past. In this build, I use MZZ1 budget linear switches from Uni Keyboards. Use code DUTCHKB at checkout. These switches are $1.50 for 10 of them, which is crazy for what you get. They come factory lube with 205G0 and 105 oil mix, saving you the time on lubricating your switches. I will leave a link below and please enjoy the sound test. Wow, the JRIS 80 for $165 honestly leaves me speechless. How can they pack all of these features in one board for the price? This now sets a new tone for budget keyboards in the market. To be honest, I'm rarely a fan of budget keyboards these days as they all feel short-handed and quick cash grabs. I can seriously say this board competes with some of the more expensive keyboards in my collection and has quickly risen to one of my favorites. Not only aesthetically, but typing experience and sound. Given all the options from gasket placement, colors, PCB, plates, etc., to me this keyboard should be in everyone's hands. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you like this style of content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.